In this lesson, we'll take a look at graphing sinusoidal functions of the form uh, either a sine k x minus d plus c or a cos k x minus d plus c. So these will have uh, an amplitude that's not 1, a period that's not 2 pi. They'll have some kind of a horizontal translation or and or a phase shift. And the example on this page, we're asked to graph y equals 3 sine 4 x minus pi over 4 plus 2. Now we're dealing in radians. Uh, notice that the horizontal scale is in radians, not degrees. And uh, first of all, the a value here in front of the uh, sine or cos is the amplitude. So in this particular graph, the 3 here is the amplitude. And remember, the amplitude is the distance uh, vertically between the axis, the horizontal line through the middle of the graph, and a peak or a valley, a maximum or a minimum point. This is the regular sine function here, so the one we're going to draw is going to have an amplitude of 3, 3 times as large. Now the period is, the standard period is 2 pi. Notice this period is 2 pi. And since we have a 4 here, we divide that into the normal period to find the transform period here. So 2 pi divided by 4, and 2 fourths reduces to a half. So that reduces to pi over 2. So the period of the function we're going to draw is uh, much shorter, a quarter the size of this one here. The pi over 4 value here it represents a phase shift or a horizontal translation, and it goes to the right. Remember the sine, it says x minus pi over 4. It's actually x minus the phase shift, so the phase shift actually goes to the right. If this was a plus sign, then you think of that as instead of adding, you'd be subtracting a negative, and then it actually goes to the left. The vertical translation is this quantity here. There's two added to the entire function, so the entire function goes up 2. And the way I handle the vertical translation on the graph is it's like that axis through the middle or the x-axis has been moved up two units. And so if we now think of that as the new x-axis translated up two units, then we can draw the graph using the period amplitude and phase shift that are given. Now, our phase shift is pi over 4 to the right. So once you've uh, handled the vertical translation, handle next the, uh, the phase shift. We've gone pi over 4 to the right. So instead of starting here right on the y-axis, we're going to go pi over 4 to the right. Now notice that pi over 4 is half of pi over 2. So if that's pi over 2, then that distance would be pi over 4. And the period is supposed to be pi over 2. Notice that pi over 2 is three blocks here long. And so if my cycle starts here, or my period starts here, one, two, three blocks long will be my period. The sine function also crosses the axis, the horizontal axis, right in the middle between the beginning and the end. So right in the middle between the beginning and the end where is where it crosses. Remember that there is a maximum between the beginning and the middle. And so right above here, of course, three units up because the amplitude is three. Right halfway between here and here, there's going to be a maximum point. Halfway between here and here, there's going to be a minimum point down here. And then we draw our sine curve or sinusoidal shape. And if you want to draw more, you can just duplicate the same shape, the same period, and draw a couple of more periods. So that's what the graph of y equals 3 sine 4 x minus pi over 4 plus 2 looks like. Flipping over to the example on page 2, we're going to graph a cosine graph here. Now again, starting in the same order that we did in the previous page, I'll look at the negative 2 first. And the 2 means the amplitude. The negative means that there is a reflection in the x-axis. So this is the regular cosine graph. We're going to reflect in the x-axis and of course also make the amplitude 2. Uh, so instead of looking in this shape, it'll actually start, go up, peak, and then come down to end. Okay, so it's going to be upside down compared to this regular cosine graph. Now the regular cosine graph, of course, has a period of 2 pi just like the sine function does. And so in order to find the period, the, the 1 third here is the uh, constant, the k value. And so to find the period, I'll divide that 1 third into 2 pi. 2 pi divided by 1 third is the same as 2 pi times the reciprocal of a third, or 3 over 1. And, of course, um, we can forget about the denominator 1. It's really just 2 pi times 3, which, of course, is 6 pi. So a very long period, 3 times the length of this one. Now, the, the pi over 2 is the phase shift or horizontal translation, and it's gone pi over 2 to the left. Uh, remember, it's x minus whatever the phase shift is, so it says x plus pi over 2. If we think of it as x take away negative pi over 2, the negative pi over 2 meaning it goes to the left. 
And then the minus 3 means there's a vertical translation of 3 units down, and so we'll handle that first. There's the 3 units down, that's the axis that goes right through the middle of the graph. Now, the, the function uh, has a phase shift of pi over 2 to the left, so instead of starting uh, on the y-axis, we're going to go pi over 2 to the left. Now remember, the, the function is reflecting the x-axis, so if there wasn't a reflection in the x-axis, we would actually go pi over 2 to the left. Now, notice that pi is 4 blocks, so pi over 2 would be 2 blocks. So we'll go 2 blocks to the left, and we're not starting the amplitude above this, but we're starting the amplitude below because it's reflected in the x-axis. So we'll start here. Now the period is 6 pi, so we're at negative pi over 2. So 6 pi in this direction would be over here. It's, um, it's going to be at pi over 2 before the 6 pi. Okay, so that's the end of our cycle. It's a very long period. Now in the middle, we'll have our maximum point. And so that's got to be 3 pi past this point or 3 pi before this point. So if this is at negative pi over 2, then 3 pi in this direction would be here at 2 and a half pi or 5 halves pi. The function will cross right in the middle here. So it'll cross that horizontal axis right there at pi. Now again, uh, it's the half the period is 3 pi, so pi and a half, or 1.5 pi, would be where it crosses there. So that's a half pi, and another pi means it's going to cross there. And the same thing in this direction. A half a pi and another pi means it's going to cross on the way back down right there. And so then we draw our sinusoidal shape. And so that's one cycle or one period of our function. Flipping over to uh, the last example, this example is carried over two pages. A Ferris wheel with a radius of 12 meters makes one complete revolution every 20 seconds. And we're told that the bottom of the wheel is 2 meters off the ground or above the ground. And we're asked to draw a graph to show the height of a person above the ground over three cycles or three revol revolutions of the wheel, assuming that they start at the bottom. So notice that vertically every block here is 2 meters. So we'll put a dot right here at 2 meters. And so after five seconds, that's a quarter of a revolution, they would be uh, 12 meters up, and then they would go another 12 meters up. So actually halfway through, they're at the top, half of 20 seconds. At 10 seconds, they would be up here at 26 meters. So uh, the radius is 12, so after five seconds, they've gone up 12. They're uh, halfway up, and, and uh, so they're actually at 14 and then another uh, 12 up in another 5 seconds, they're at 26. And on the way back down, at 15 seconds, they'd be at uh, 12 meters again, and then of course after 20 seconds, they're at the bottom again, so they're right here. And so this is a graph of one complete cycle, and then we would duplicate it to for another 20 seconds, and then duplicate it again for another 20 seconds. So that's three complete cycles. Flipping over to the last page, uh, uh, we're asked to find an equation to model the height of a person on the Ferris wheel as a function of time. Now, this is the function I'm going to use. I could use a cosine function too. Um, it doesn't really matter what you use. The A here is the amplitude, and the amplitude is half the distance from here to here. Now, we're told the radius is 12, so the distance from here to here or the middle to the top is 12, so that's why A has to be 12. The amplitude is 12 meters. Now the period is 20 seconds, so we're actually told the period and we have to find what k is. And so the period is 20, so 20 would equal 2 pi divided by the value of k. And so rearranging for k, k would be 2 pi divided by the 20, and then we can reduce that to get k is pi over 10. The phase shift would be 5 seconds because the sine function starts in the middle here, so that distance right there is the phase shift, so d would be 5. And the vertical translation is 14 meters up. See, here's the middle, that's actually at 14 meters. So the vertical translation is 14 up. So substituting those values, 12 in place of a, this is k, that's d, that's c, there's my equation. And in C, we're asked to explain how the, fer the graph would change if the Ferris wheel rotated faster, and the period would just get shorter. And it would look something like that. 